again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today, we're going to look at some great bass lines from a great style for bass players of any level. These five bass lines are from the two-tone style or UK ska revival of the late 70s and early 80s. So we're talking bands like Madness, The Specials, The Beat and Bad Manners to name just a few. They blended the Jamaican ska and reggae styles with the punk and new wave styles that were so popular at the time. The bass lines are always melodic, interesting and just about the best demonstrations out there for application of chord tones and how they work in outlining a progression. So if you're learning a little theory or harmony and you're wondering how our Arpeggios, specifically triads, can help you with jamming or creating a bass line, then this is the style for you. So let's start with something quite sedate. Let's look at Message to You Rudy by The Specials. Like many two-tone hits of the time, this is actually a cover of a traditional rock steady track. The original is called Rudy, A Message to You, but today we're looking at The Specials cover version, which sounds like this. So this is in the key of C and we begin with a C, third fret of the A string, moving up to an E at the second fret of the D string. So this is over a C major chord and we have, so that's the root and the third in there. So chord tone straight away, so back to the C, so one, two, three, four, then down to the F, first fret of the E string, so. F again, then G, B, so that's third fret, E string, second fret on the A string, and back to the C. Okay, so for those first two bars, one, two, three, four. Then we play that riff again, but for the second time, we have, so one and two on the C, just that C there, and then A, fifth fret of the E string, leading us down into that F, so one and two, three, four, then F, same as the second bar. So the whole thing, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and that's it. So as I mentioned, this is an outline of a chord progression. We've got C major, then F major, G major. So it's just a one, four, five in the key of C. So in that first bar, it's just using the root and the third. Then we move down to the F, root for the F, then root third for the, uh, for the chord five and back. Okay, so again, we're just outlining uh, the arpeggios here. And in terms of the technique, very, very straightforward. Not much to think of in the picking hand. In the fretting hand, you can play with the second and first fingers there. So second finger for the uh, C, first finger for the E. And then switch to the fourth finger for the C to bring you down to the F with the first finger. So, so that leads nicely into there. Then for the G, you could play fourth finger, then second finger, or fourth finger, then first finger to lead us back in, back into the C, so. For that C there, you could use the first finger, then fourth finger for the A, and then back to the first finger for the F. So, you know, it's a pretty easy bass line, so you don't really have to think that much, but it's these fingerings that I'm using here is just to make things smoother. So again, let's hear that with the beat. Remember that all the tab and practice tracks are there over at the Talking Bass website, so check out the link in the info below to play along. Next we have a tune by Madness called One Step Beyond, and this was originally written by ska legend Prince Buster, and the bass line sounds like this. So 
So this tune is in the key of C minor and makes use of a lot of arpeggio movement or chord tones, okay, outlining the chord progression. So before we look at the bass line, let's just look at the two triads that we're going to be playing in a lot of these uh, bass lines. Now, these are triads, so that's three note chords, so uh, outlining a chord, so there's a chord, we can play one note at a time, we can play it as an arpeggio pattern down here, that's how we create bass lines on bass. So we've got a C major and a C minor that we'll look at. So for a C major triad, we'll be starting on a C, third fret of the A string, then we have second fret and fifth fret on the D string. So that's a C major. So I'm using the second finger there for the C, then first finger and fourth finger for the D string. So root, major third and perfect fifth. That's a major triad. I've got other lessons devoted to chord construction if you want to get really deep on these uh, arpeggios you know there's all the construction rules and everything but today we'll just look at the basic fingerings so that's the uh, C major so just try just try moving it around on the bass just play it up and down you get used to the sound and also notice that it's got a fairly uplifting sound okay major C minor would be C, E flat, and G. So third fret and sixth fret on the A string there, and then the G at the uh, fifth fret of the D string. And I'm using the first finger, fourth finger, and third finger. So that's a root, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. So that's C minor, which is a much more melancholy sound, a bit darker. So C major, happy, minor, sad. Arpeggio, C major, lifting then C minor a little bit more sad again just play it up and down the bass just get used to that fingering and you'll notice that these are actually a good workout if you're a beginner especially for the left hand you're getting used to using that fourth finger that a lot of people uh, have trouble with okay now for the bass line of one step beyond if you know the minor triad, well, the first four bars are very, very straightforward. We're just playing a C minor, just up and down. So C, E flat, G, and back. We've just covered the arpeggio. Then up to F minor, and then back down to C minor. Twice. And that's it. See how when you know various arpeggios and scales and various patterns. It makes learning songs so much easier because you don't have to think C, E flat, G, or, or that finger, that finger, or that fret, that fret. You just go C minor tried, F minor tried, C minor tried, done, okay? So, up to F minor, back to C minor. And that's it. So obviously there you can hear that we're outlining the C minor chord and the F minor chord. So if you're going to create your ba uh, bass lines yourself, you can see that the arpeggios are a great way of outlining chord progressions. Get a chord progression, outline it with the arpeggios, you instantly have a bit of a melodic bass line. So we play those four bars three times. Back to the beginning. Again. Then we move to G. So we come down to the G there, third fret of the uh, E string, and we play the G major arpeggio. Okay, so we've already played the that C major triad that we played earlier on, played on G. But instead of just playing up and down, we play it up, back to the B there, and then back up to the D. So you have this pattern. One. Very much a ska kind of rhythm. So root third fifth, third fifth root third fifth, third fifth. So that's just another way of playing an arpeggio in a bass line. Okay, so we play that three times. And then we come down to bring us back to the uh, C. So we've got G, F, E flat, D, C. So fifth and third fret D string, sixth and fifth frets on the A string. 
So all of this is quarter notes, apart from, apart from on that G where we've got the eighth note at the end. So in terms of the count, one, two, three, four, we're playing one, two, three, four. On the G, we've got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and so even at the end, one, two, three, four. All very simple rhythm. So all of that together, we have one, two, three, four. Now when you play the G, when you move up to that G, what you can do is joint bar with that pinky, the fourth finger, so, so you stay on that fourth finger, just bar it across, just move the pressure so that you're kind of playing it with the joint there on that G, and then come down first finger, fourth finger, third finger, and we're back to the start. So as you can see, this is a great workout for that left hand. You've got a lot of movement going on, between the first, fourth, and third fingers. So any kind of arpeggio line like this is a good workout for that pinky. So again, with the track. Next we've got a really cool bass line from the song Lip Up Fatty by Bad Manners. So the first four bars slowly sound like this. So remember the arpeggios that we played in the previous song? Well, here we're gonna be playing them again. So this, again, makes it really, really easy to learn. So we've got a chord progression of A major to D major and back to A major and then to E major. So we're outlining that. So for the first chord, we've got the A major. We're using the A major arpeggio, but we're playing two notes on each, uh, on each chord tone. So, so you just work up through A major, A, C sharp, and E. Two notes on each. Then back down to the C sharp, and then we come back down to the A, so. Okay. Then up to the D major. And back down to the A. See how knowing the arpeggios makes things really easy. Then for the fourth bar, things were a little bit different. We moved to the E major chord, and rhythmically things were a little bit different, so we don't play it on beat one, so it's one and two, and so we're coming on the and, so one and two and three and four, and we start on the E, so we're outlining that E major chord, so E, seventh fret of the A string, then we play the F sharp, so we play twice on the E, so F sharp, fourth fret of the D string, back to the E, then down through D and C sharp. Okay, so that's gonna be seventh, fifth, and fourth frets. So you can just think of the A major scale there, starting on the fifth, and just working on fifth, sixth, fifth, fourth, third. That's an easy way of seeing this. And that leads us back down into the A. It kind of makes you want uh, to play, you know, put that B in there, but it doesn't. It just holds on that C sharp. So, all four bars together, one, two, three, four. Now, as a little tip, you might be finding it quite tricky to come back down to the A there, and then move 
move up to the D. You have to use joint bearing to do it. So what you can do is actually use open strings. I wouldn't use open strings for the first note in there because things can get a little bit tricky as you work through. But just use the open A on the descent. So which leads you nicely, almost like a like a ghost note, uh, ghost note leading in to the D again. So open D back down to the A. Okay, so. Then in terms of the picking hand, it's all alternate picking throughout and you can start on the second finger. I would recommend that because if you start on the first finger, it's just a little bit trickier in terms of the string crossing. So start on that middle finger. So two, one, two, one, two, one. Out. Just keep it going. Two one two one two one two one. Try not to skip or use any raking throughout uh, at any point. So just two one two one two one all the way. So we play through that twice, and then we move into this section. Okay. So we're on a B here, and we have this little almost Motown kind of move of. Okay. So. It, that can be quite hard to hear. The only reason that I know that's exactly what it is is because I've used the uh, extraction of the bass line to, to really pick it out. And even though it's kind of it just sounds like a bit of a skip in there when you listen with the full mix, when you actually extract the bass line, it's okay. So we've got B, then F sharp, then B. It's this root fifth root you know, extended power chord kind of mood, uh, move and seventh fret on the uh, on the E string and then it's the ninth fret on the A and D strings. Okay, so. Then we move up to the C sharp, ninth fret of the, um, of the E string. We play twice on the B before that, so. to the E 7th fret of the A string. Then we have this really weird move of the C there at the 8th fret of the E string and then down to the E open E. So, okay. And again, I wouldn't have really noticed the open E as well uh, if I'd not extracted the bass line. So, then back. the open E then to lead into the B flat and we have a quarter note triplet. Now I'm not going to get into all of the uh, into all of the technical technicalities of the rhythm in here. Just listen to the original. You've got this one, two, three. So triplet. So okay. It's pretty obvious if you listen to it. So It. So let's put all of that together slowly. One, two, three, four, and. Let's have a look at another classic by Madness in the shape of Nightboat to Cairo. This is the main verse riff and it sounds like this.
this tune is kind of in the key of C, although I'll get to that in a minute, uh, but it's all based on arpeggios. So again, we're gonna be using the major and minor arpeggios. So all we gotta do is outline the actual chord progression and that will pretty much see you right. Now, in terms of the key, it's kind of based on a Phrygian dominant scale, which gives it this kind of... That, that very exotic kind of sound. We've got this... This, this minor second in there that always gives you that kind of sound. It's got that major third in it and we've got that flat seven. Okay. So the first four bars sound like this. Easy. So all we've got is C major arpeggio. Remember we covered that before, so I'm not gonna look at all the notes in there, just C major arpeggio, up and down. B flat minor. Okay, so C to B flat minor. Just up and down, round and round. Okay, so one bar each. Uh, so look at this in four bar chunks because it, it runs round and round quite a while. So one, two, three, four. That's once round, and we play around that four times, and then there's a little bit of a tag to move up to the next part. So, in terms of the technique in here, just the same as ever with the C major triad, but then for the B flat minor, you can play with the first finger, fourth finger, third finger, but I tend to sometimes use the second finger for the F there at the third fret of the D string, just because it, it's a wider stretch in there. It's just a little bit more comfy than using the third finger, but it's totally down to you. With the third finger, it's also okay. So we play those four bars four times, and then on, on the fourth time, we have B flat, and then open D, E flat, E natural, up to the F. So open D, first fret, second fret, and leading up to the third fret of the D string. And then we're up to the F minor. So now things get a little bit different, but we are still playing through these arpeggios. So I'm just gonna give you the arpeggios and then you just memorize them from there. So F minor, so up and down. So root, third, fifth, third. Uh, so I'm standing at the third fret there of the D string. Then down to the fourth fret of the E string for the A flat minor. So we've got F minor, A flat minor, this is why, if you know the arpeggios, it's a lot, lot easier. Up to the F minor, then D flat major. So fourth fret of the uh, of the A string. So if you think third fret for the on the D string for the F minor, and then the other two that we alternate are gonna be A flat minor, so fourth fret on the E string, and then fourth fret on the A string. Just think of that fourth fret there on the E string and the A string, so. A flat minor, F minor again, D flat major. Now on the D flat major, because we're gonna be coming back to the F, he actually plays up and then that third, fifth thing that we used previously in uh, Lip Up Fatty, so. Okay, so. And that lets us come back to the F minor. So then we repeat that, so F minor, back to the F, and then we're down on the E flat, sixth fret of the A string. So one, two, and the four and. So root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, okay. So we play that three times, and then E flat, D, so sixth fret, fifth fret on the A string, down to the C major and we'll play the same pattern. So. And that's it. So for that whole F minor section, we have three, four. So again, instead of learning all the individual notes in there, if you know your arpeggios, it makes learning something like this 
a lot easier. Maybe not easy, but a lot easier, because all you've got to do is remember the chord progression. You know, just thinking F minor to A flat. And just do it in chunks with something like this that gets a little bit trickier. You just think F minor to A flat minor. Just go round and round on that. That's an exercise in itself. You know, then add the D flat major in. Just round and round on that. Don't worry about putting it all together straight away. Just get that down and then you can add it in, like I said, in little chunks. So, all of it together. So, one, two, three, four. So that's one. That was two. three and now now the only technical thing that I'd mention here is when we're on the E flat there in terms of the fretting hand, we've got that second finger, first finger, fourth finger. When we play the E flat D to bring us down, we've got second finger, first finger, and then switch down to the second finger for the C major. So just bear that in mind. It's that little, that move between the first finger on the D to the second finger on the C. That's a nice little position shift that you can practice. First finger on the fifth fret, second finger on the third fret. Just get used to that, that move. So one more time with the track. things are going to get a little bit more tricky with this classic ska bass line from Hands Off She's Mine by The Beat. So this bass line is only two bars in length, but it is pretty tricky to get your head around, okay? So it's all based on 16th notes. The chord progression is really simple, it's just G major, C major, D major, C major. So we're in the key of G, so... And that's it! So we have a 16th note pickup or anacrusis into the first beat. So it's going to be an open E there. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Okay, so we've got that E leading in. And then just learn the, those first few notes. So G, B, G, A. Okay, so two sixteenth notes on the G, two sixteenth notes on the B. So third fret, uh, E string, second fret on the A string. Then we've got G to the A. Okay, two sixteenth notes again. So third fret, fifth fret on the E string. So we have one, two, three, four. Next, we lead into the third beat with the A again at the fifth fret of the uh, of the A string, and then we have. So we're now on the C major chord. So we've got C E C. So third fret A, uh, A string, second fret on the D string. So we just play two notes on each C, E, and then just one on the C, okay? So, okay, so all of that together. 
So just get that down first. Three, four. That heavy A there, in, that's the thing that can throw you off, so. Because that A isn't really a chord tone, so. Then we have, so we're on the D major chord here, but we're leading in with the, with the B there. So second fret on the A string leading into, so fifth fret and fourth fret on the uh, D string there. So then we come back to the D and then the open A. So, so all of that together. Then we finish with, so this time we're on the C major again. We've got the E, second fret of the D string, then twice on the C, third fret of the A string, then A, fifth fret of the E string twice, then back to C, third fret of the um, A string twice. Okay, so we've got the open E again to lead back into the G. Okay, so not that easy to remember. So begin learning this really slowly. Three and a four E and a... And always learn it in chunks. So just begin with that first part. Just get used to that. Three, four. You know, that that A might throw you off. You know, you can, when you're playing it like this, you can think you're on the right beat and you're actually on the wrong beat, so. And then add the next part. Just stick with that until you've got it. So three, four. Three and a four E and a. Add that next bit. Work round and round and round until you've got it. And then finally. Just play it once, you don't have to do the repeat, and then eventually, once you've got it down, add the repeat. Now, in terms of the technique here for the left hand, it's pretty much all what you would have for a one finger per fret with a G major scale. So, you're starting with that second finger, okay? So, then fourth finger for the A. So, you know, all the third frets are taken with the second finger, all the fourth fret, uh, sorry, fifth frets are taken with the fourth finger, all the second frets are taken with the first finger, you know, it's pretty much just one finger per fret. And then for the picking hand, well, pretty much what comes naturally, but, you know, I pretty much use uh, uh, alternate picking throughout and starting on that second finger. Okay, so, you know, there might be a little bit of raking you can put in there, but just, you know, just work through it slowly and, you know, it'll come. So as you build up more speed, you'll get something like this. One, two, three, four, e and. So let's try one more time with the track, but one thing to bear in mind when you play along to this, it's only one bar counting, and when you listen to that, you're gonna have one, two, three, four, and then the snare that comes in, that is going to be with your open E, okay? So you just have to be aware of that, you know? So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then that snare will be your open E leading in. So 
as you can see, those bass lines are great for players of any level, and particularly great for beginner to intermediate players. You get to move your fingers around a little, and you get to see how chord tones work in creating a melodic bass riff around a chord progression at a very basic, easy to understand level. So remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also let me know in the comments what other ska or reggae lines you'd like me to cover. Also check out the tab and tracks over at Talking Bass by clicking the info below. Remember there are over 750 free lessons in the lesson map, all organized for ease of navigation. So go check it out and I'll see you next week.